Welcome to iTech 325. I'm your instructor, Professor Will Sanders. Today, we'll be taking a look at your lab one assignment, introduction to the VM, uh, the VM workspace. Um, now, due to the nature of this class, I just want to kind of give a caveat. Um, you guys are training to be uh, systems administrators. So unlike some of the other classes that you may might take in the computer science department where you're you're working with pre-built virtual machines in our class I want you to be able to get the hands-on experience of building a VM yourself so we're going to be going through the process of uh, installing VMware player or VMware fusion or perhaps workstation if you want to get the more professional version uh, but you're going to be installing that on your uh, machine that you're using to take the course. Now, if you don't have access to a machine that um, has the hardware resources or hardware specifications necessary to run one of those um, applications, feel free to email me so that I can reach out to on the Towson Tech Hub to see if we can make some arrangements to get you um, access to uh, some technical resources um, so that you can complete the class uh, in accordance to the way that uh, we have it mapped out. Um, but for the most part, the specifications for VMware Player and if you're on a Mac, VMware Fusion are pretty low. So you should be able to get a virtual machine, hopefully on the computer that you're using to view this course and view this video right now. Now, for those who may not be uh, quite as familiar uh, with what a virtual machine is, um, with the way that you can think about it is you can think about it as uh, the process of having multiple computers exist within, inside of one piece of physical hardware. In order to accomplish that, you need a special piece of software called a hypervisor. That hypervisor allows your operating system to share its resources, its, its RAM, its CPU, its, its storage, to share those resources among multiple operating systems. So you can kind of see an example of it here in the image. We have our hardware platform, that's our physical computer. We have the virtual machine monitor, in this case, that's the same thing as a hypervisor. And then on top of that hypervisor, we're gonna create these virtual machines or VMs, and then each one of those VMs is going to have its own guest operating system that exists uh, within, within that contained environment. So in order to pull this off on your computer, we need to get that, that uh, piece, that layer that's in the middle, that hypervisor installed. And that's what VMware Player um, and VMware Fusion is another, op another uh, popular uh, virtualization hypervisor called virtual box that you can also utilize but all three of those tools provide you with a method to be able to create those vms directly on your machine in this lab i'm going to demonstrate how to install the vmware player version that's the version of vmware player that uh, is utilized on windows and linux operating systems it sits on top of those operating systems but before we get into the installation process of that, that VMware player software, I want to um, go over a quick useful resource that you guys have access to as Towson students, and that's the Towson Tech Hub. Um, if you do a quick Google search for Towson Tech Hub, it'll actually bring you right to a link for, the, for that resource. So I've searched Towson Tech Hub before. Search it brings my first thing in a Google search shows Tech Hub at Towson University. But if you want to get there the long way, then you'll go to Towson.edu slash FCSM slash department stash slash computer uh, info uh, infosec slash resources slash labs dot HTML. So just Google it and it'll get you right to the Tech Hub. But the Tech Hub is a very useful resource. This is where you'll get access to a lot of the tutoring resources, lab administrators um, when we're on campus, 
and uh, specifically of interest to us, the Tech Hub SharePoint site. So from this uh, Tech Hub page, I scroll down to the spring 20, 2021 entry here, and I have a link for the Tech Hub SharePoint. You click on that. It'll take you right into Towson SharePoint site. If it doesn't take you directly in, you may need to sign into your uh, your top, your my TU account. Uh, before that, your Office 365 account that you're given access to uh, as a thousand student, you might need to sign into that, and then you'll be able to get access to the the CIS Tech Hub uh, SharePoint page. In the SharePoint page, there's tons of resources. Um, you again might have used some of these resources for your other classes, but of note to us is the area here that says VMs. We're going to click on that. And then when you get in there, you'll notice that there are several uh, pre-built VMs. So these are virtual machines that have already been built. They've already been customized. Um, and then they've been uh, compressed into files that can be deployed in VMware Player or VMware Fusion. So you have access to these. But again, we're going to kind of shy away from those in this course because I want you to get the experience of setting up those VMs yourself. So what I want you to do is go to the bottom of that list where you can find how to guides on running uh, VMs in VMware player and then how to run a VM in VMware fusion. These how to guides will walk you through the setup process for each one of those um, uh, software solutions on various operating systems and how to load a uh, a um, either load a pre-built uh, VM or load a ISO. A ISO is a file, a, a file that contains all the installation files. It's a compressed file that contains all the installation files for an operating system. You can use a ISO to actually create a VM uh, from scratch, and it'll be it'll basically replicate the process of installing an operating system directly on computer hardware. So that's a really good a way to practice that that process so those are the items i want you to to be aware of uh you can come to tech hub you can get that get those two downloads those pdfs take some time to peruse the rest of the tech hub there's a lot of good resources on here that you uh can take advantage of okay so let's take a look at vmware workstation player again quick google search a VMware Workstation Player will bring you right to a download uh, link for it. Also, if you consult the how-to guide, there's a link within the how-to guide for the VMware Workstation, pl Workstation Player that'll take you to VMware's uh, website. VMware is just one of many um, hypervisor vendors. Um, they're kind of like the the uh, the top notch of the bunch, though. So more than likely. When you step into a uh, corporate environment and they're using virtualization, uh, more than likely they're going to have some VMware tools uh, at their disposal. So this is a good, good, another good systems admin tool to to learn to have under your belt. All right. So once we get to the VMware workstation, the VMware website, uh, VMware website with the VMware workstation player download. We'll uh, scroll down. You'll pick the edition that works with your current operating system. So there are some system requirements um, to do to install Workstation Player 16. You're going to need to either have Windows, uh, a Windows operating system, or a Linux operating system. Um, as I mentioned before, Macs, this version of the player is not uh, compatible with Mac. They have a separate product specifically for Mac. It's called VMware fusion so we're going to go and we're going to download the um, since i have a windows 10 operating system on the computer that i'm recording from uh, we're going to go with the vmware workstation player for windows there are going to be some other hardware specifications uh, that you'll need to meet the minimum requirements of in order to install the software just like any other piece of software um, again do some online research You'll be able to find out what the specs are, the, the minimum requirements are for VMware uh, Workstation Player 16. So determine that. Make sure that your, your system meets those requirements. Um, 
if they don't meet the requirements and you go to install the software, it'll let you know that your system doesn't meet the requirements. Um, <clears throat> but the, the bar is kind of set kind of low in order to get this hypervisor on there. So more than likely, if you have a, a computer that's, you know, at least no more than seven years old, you should meet all the requirements to, to do the installation. This is the VMware Workstation uh, installation wizard. So after the download, it, download it, completed, um, and it unpacked all the installation files, it, presented, it presents you with this wizard, this guided installation. Uh, again, pretty straightforward. This is one of those next, next, next type installations. There will be a couple of things that you need to define, though. So here I get my welcome page. It's just letting me know that um, it's getting ready to do a setup. Um, right now, I have VMware Workstation on my system already, so it's going to do an upgrade. So I hit next. It's going to have me read and accept the end user license agreement. Um, in order to move forward, that has to be accepted. So I'm going to just hit I accept the terms of the license agreement and then do next. Here, I'm asked about customizing my setup. If I want to change where the program files are stored, I can hit this change button. I'm going to leave it set to default because it's default into my program files folder on my Windows computer. And that's typically where you store application files um the 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 system files for different software applications we go there so that's a good place to keep it um i have an option to use enhanced keyboard drivers um i'm going to leave that unchecked and i have the option to add vmware workstation console tools to my path uh path variable so this is basically going to allow some of the tools that VMware has, Workstation has, to be added to the, the basic search path for my um, operating system. So I'm going to check that one. That way, any commands I use within the VM will be easily found. Next. <clears throat> I'm going to let it check for updates before restarting, just in case, like I mentioned before, I have, I have the program on my computer already. So now it's going to update it. It's going to check to see if I have the latest version and perform an update if necessary. And then this here, if you, if you like, you can join the VMware customer experience. And this basically allows uh, your system to send off information, uh, statistics and things like that to VMware so they can make their product better. I'm going to uncheck that one right now and hit next. Under the shortcuts menu. I get the option to create shortcuts for VMware player on my desktop and in the start menu uh, uh, under the programs folder. I'm going to leave both of those checked. It makes it a little bit easier for me to find a program when I need it. Next and during the scan, it noticed that there were some upgrades. I don't have the latest version of VMware player on my system, so it's going to upgrade it. I'm going to hit the upgrade button and let it do its thing. Okay, pause there for a second because that process took a few minutes. But once it finishes running, you're going to be presented with uh, this option here to either license the software or to just go ahead and finish the installation. I'm just going to hit, uh, well, if you do have a software license key, you can hit license and enter that key here. This will upgrade your uh, version of VM, VMware uh, Workstation Player from the non-commercial version to the commercial one, and it'll unlock some additional features. If you don't have one of those, like we're not going to use that one, we're just going to use it non-commercial, we can just hit finish, and then VMware Player is now on, on the system. Once you uh, launch the VMware Player application, you should, you should see an icon on your desktop now. Once you launch it, you'll be presented with a tool that looks like this. I'm trying to get me to upgrade to pro. Remind me later. All right. You'll get presented with a tool that looks like this. Now, I had some uh, pre-existing VMs already on my system. So what happened is VMware Workstation Player picked up 
those VMs and it added them over here on the left side of the screen. So this Windows Server 2016, this Ubuntu 64-bit, those are both virtual machines that I have already built and have on my system. So what will happen is as you create new VMs, they'll show up, they'll populate over here on the left side of this little uh, interface. Uh, if you're going to create new ones, uh, a brand new VM, you'll go over here to the right side of that interface and you can click on the create new virtual machine, create a new virtual machine link and that'll launch a wizard that walks you through the process of setting up a, a brand new VM. If there's a VM already uh, that already exists, is already pre-built, and you want to add it into VMware Player. So say, for example, you built a VM on another computer. You copy it off of that, you copy the, that VM's files off of that computer onto, say, a flash drive or something like that, or onto your cloud storage, and then you download it onto a new system. You can then launch that VM or import that VM into VMware Player by opening the virtual machine. So you have that option here. And then the last one, upgrade to VMware Workstation Pro. That's, again, if you want to get more bells and whistles, you want you want the uh, VM version of VMware that you're working with to be on par with what you might see in a, a corporate or business environment, then you can upgrade to Workstation Pro for a fee. Now, you guys have a special benefit as Towson students. Uh, Towson has a partnership with VMware where you can get VMware Workstation uh, Pro for free. Um, uh, I would contact the Tech Hub to get more information about that, but they, there are free versions. I was able to get um, a free version of VMware uh, Player, uh, no, VMware Workstation Pro versions 15 and 16 were available on the site. So, again, reach out to the Tech Hub if you're interested in getting a Pro version so you can see some of those extra features that are available. Once you've created your VM though, uh, and it populates over here on the left side of this interface, you can then click on that virtual machine and you're able to launch it or play it directly from this interface. And once it launches, it'll run as if it was its own standalone computer, even though it lives on top of another operating system. All right, so that's about it for the basic setup of VMware Player, uh, at least the VM, yeah, the VMware Workstation Player tool. We'll talk more in future labs about how to actually set up virtual machines and things like that. We'll, we'll discuss that in a later lab. To go along with this, your uh, lab activity, uh, which you'll be receiving your 25 points on, it's going to be based on uh, some of the information that you heard here and then some information that you're at, you'll be able to find in the tech hub. I'll list a quick five question uh, quiz or document inside of the labs folder for week one. Um, complete that and submit it uh, by, you know, the due date and then you'll earn your points uh, for this first lab.